fucking what? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight... Tonight! Who do we got here? Who do we got? Who do we got? All right, we're coming back to the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yes, indeed, Red Hot Chili Peppers fans, feeling you! Come on now, here we go. This is a request from a... Oh, hold on. Adrain? I thought it was Adrian. Adrain Coaster. Coester? K-O-E-S-T-E-R? Coester? We'll go Coester. So, Adrain Coester. He or she, I'm not sure if it's he or she, Adrain wanted to watch me react to this song from the Red Hot Chili Peppers called If You Have to Ask. Now, to the best of my knowledge, I've never heard this song before. It does not strike a bell. It does not resonate with me. However, as always, if I start listening to the song and I go, yeah, I've heard this before. I recognize it. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was originally posted by Felas or Felas85. I think it's Felas85. And this video has 269,250 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. If you have to ask, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Brazil, 1999. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. Yeah, this has got the funk. This definitely has the funk. Between Chad on the backbeat, doom, ba doom, ba doom, doom, ba doom, ba doom, ba. Yeah, he's got that. He's he's got the snare right on the two. One and two, one, two and three and four and one and. It's the kick that's doing all the offbeat stuff. He's got a great backbeat going. Flea has got some. Great, great riffs going on with the whole diddly dam, the whole uh, galloping one to three, one to three, one to three. That diddly dam, bong, diddly dam, 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 that whole one to three, four. That it's so tasty, so tasty, very, very well done. It all started though, it all kicked off on the right foot with John on that bounce. But down, bounce, but down, bounce, but down, bounce, but down, bounce. That feel, that. He's doing. <laughs> he's got a great way of going from the his transition from the off beats to the on beats. It's it's, or from the off beats to the down beats. He's just really transitioning well in there. Just very smooth, very clean riff. It's really well done. 
I mean, Anthony Kiedis' vocals are what they are. You know, I, I've said it a million times. I, I don't want to harp on the guy. But he's got that nasal tone that everybody knows. But once again, in a song context like this, more important than tone, he's cleanly delivering the vocal lines. He's It's clear diction, well placement on the, a great placement on on the uh, emphasis, on the downbeats of uh, fitting the the flow, the context of what he's saying within the measure. It's placement and it's super clean. It's not, it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel shoehorned. He's not trying to put too many consonants and uh, too many um, syllables into a single phrase. It's really well done, super clean, and it just feels very natural within the context of the song. So great job to him. I know I know I'm a big critic of his when it comes to his nasal tone, and I'll be the first to admit I'm a, I'm a critic of it, but there's no denying his ability when it comes to a song like this of his ability to flow well. So, let's keep going. Let's go back. Let's go back. Um, before a guitar solo, I don't want to pause in the middle. I, I want to do the entire solo without pausing. So let's pause. Okay. Um, I like that little breakdown. Bop, 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 bop. And what I liked about it was it was so clean between, and it was so on between Chad and Flea. It was just right together. Every single hit together. Very clean, locked in. That is what you want from a rhythm section. I mean, you could have all the flashy fills and all the flashy lines that you want, but if the drummer and the bass player are not locked in super tight like that, a riff like that, a breakdown like that is going to fall to pieces and it's going to sound like absolute garbage. This did not. This was super locked in, super tight, and therefore it made it very effective. As simple as it was. Just simple downbeats. One, two two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Super locked in though, right on the downbeat. Not behind, not on top, just not in front, just right on top of it, which was fantastic. Flea's bass playing, I'm getting a lot of shades. I, I could be wrong about this. I'm getting a lot of shades of like, I don't know the name of the bass player, but I'm I know the name of the band, Tower of Power. I'm getting that that feel of that bass player. Uh, I wish I knew his name. Good Lord. I love Tower of Power. And I can't think of the guy's name. <laughs> uh, Donald Dunn keeps... Uh, Don Dunn keeps put, coming to my mind. I know that's not him. That, that's from the Blues Brothers. Uh, no. Uh, shoot. I don't remember the guy's name. But I, I'm getting shades of Tower of Power from him in this song. It, it's got the funk. But it's got the soul at the same time. It's got great feel. It's not... His bass playing, it's got the funk. It, it's, he's on top of the beat, but at the same time, it's just... It's so smooth that it's got the soul behind it. It's just really nice. I'm digging it. I'm absolutely digging it. Let's keep going. Let's see this guitar solo. Let's see what John's going to bring to the table here. 
Gem sessions like that. That's fun. That was fun. Brings back memories. <laughs> good stuff. Really good stuff. Well, there you go, folks. That was the Red Hot Chili Peppers with If You Have to Ask. That was a request from Adrain Coaster. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, I am going to give this... I'm going to give this a 7.9. Yep. 7.9, I feel good with that score. Let me tell you why. Why? <laughs> this song had the funk, without question. Uh, primarily, I mean, I mean, it's hard to say who really brought it more than anyone else. I mean, between John, Flea, and Chad, all three of them, I, I'm looking to see who really kind of brought it more than the other one, and I honestly can say they all brought it equally. And I think that's one of the reasons why the song felt so good is because it wasn't just one person bringing the funk. All three of them brought it. Um, John's riff at the beginning. It was really nice. Chad coming in, laying on that backbeat really well with what uh, John was doing. Flea coming in and filling it out with those, you know, the... What did the... Uh, the uh, Oh god, there were sextuplets. So he was doing four sextuplets and laying out on the other two. 
when you do this one. Da -da -da -da. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's, uh, he was doing the one, two, three, four, laying on on five and six. Okay, so that's that was the rip. That was the pattern I was looking for. Very smooth, very slick, very tasty. Uh, from all three of them, just really doing a great, great job of laying the funk down. Anthony Kiedis' vocals, as I've always said, got that nasal tone, which I'm not a fan of, but there is absolutely no denying his ability to phrase his lyrics out so well, to be able to fit all the syllables that he wants to put in into a, into a phrase, and not in a forced or shoehorned way, just very deliberate. Um, his phrasing is amazing. I, I, I give them all the credit in the world for that. So... Fine job on his part, phrasing up, phrasing up the lyrics and making them fit within the context of the song. Uh, this song for me, this performance for me, more than anything, I mean, don't get me wrong, the first, you know, four minutes were great and all, the, the first three, three and a half minutes, four minutes of all, it was great and all. Where the song really kicked in for me was when Anthony Kiedis decided to stop and go have a seat back there with Chad and let John and Flea just have some fun. Uh, John broke his E-string. Man, that sucks. When you break a string on stage, that really sucks, man. I've I've been there and done that. Um, the thing is, you can't stop. You have to keep going, and you just got to adjust. Luckily, you got five more strings, you know? <laughs> so you can always keep going. I'll never forget a time where we were playing a show. It was our last song. It was the last song of the show. The very first note of the song I broke, I was actually playing, my, I was playing one of my sixes, and I broke my C string. And I was like, great. <laughs> so I got to do everything up on the high G now. So uh, we're, we're playing and all the high parts. I'm having to go way up high on the G. And the last, like, four measures of the song, <laughs> my G string broke. So now I'm down to four. I'm down to my B and then my E and my E and my A and my D. So B, E, A, D were still there. My G and C broke. And I'm like, god damn, could anything else possibly go wrong? So on the very last note, the very last note of the song, it's an, I hit an open E. I hit, boom, and my E string broke. I took my bass off and I threw it on the ground. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but you can't do that, though. I, that was very unprofessional on my part, and I should not have done that. I should not have shown my frustration, but I, I was just so pissed. But John, consummate professional that he is. Uh, broke his E string and just said, well, I got five other strings. I got to make it work. And he did. Uh, and then he and Flea, you know, trading off and having some fun. They're interacting with each other. Just having a great jam session right there with uh, with Chad. And I, you saw it because Anthony just went back, sat down and was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just rocking out to it. It was having fun. So that's where it really kind of kicked in for me. Prior to that, I'm going to be honest with you. Prior to that, I was giving this song like about a 7.3, 7.4, okay? But because of that last jam session where, you know, John broke the string and the solo, you know, had to be adjusted and Flea came over and they were trading off, having some fun, playing some great tasty licks, it went up to the 7.9. So they had, they had a good time. It looked like they had a good time. And as a result, it boosted up their score. Now, did I enjoy the song? It was cool. It was fun. Would I ever add this to a playlist? Never in a million years. <laughs> this is, I mean, it, was, it had the funk. It was fun. Would I ever skip over it? No, I would listen to this again. I would, but I don't think I would ever put this on a playlist. I'm just, I'm just being honest, guys. It, it was a good song. I enjoyed it. Would I listen to it again? If it came on, sure. I wouldn't skip it, but I, I would listen to it and I would enjoy it, but... I would never intentionally go looking for it. So hopefully that clears it up. 7.9 is a great score though. If you're not sure, look down on my scoring chart. 7.0 is the bottom threshold for really good. This is 0.9 higher, almost an 8.0. Very close. Not quite, but very close. So 7.9, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, be free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. 
Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It will do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.